Hi, so I will be talking about critical writing. When I first proposed this talk, there was some confusion about the title. Should it be creative writing instead of critical writing? That's what I was asked. Now, this question did not surprise me at all because I've faced it so many times now. Writing, for most people, means creative writing. Writing a novel, poetry, or maybe even a memoir. And we usually think that there are some people who are born to be writers who just have a knack for writing and the rest of us are just readers or mediocre writers or just people who know the language we are writing in but are not very good at it. Some of us have not even heard about critical writing or for that matter about teaching or being taught how to write. Like I said, we think that we are either writers or non-writers and that the good writers are the ones who go for English honors. Those in the pure or applied sciences are just getting by, somehow putting the required words together to frame an answer or to write a report or a research paper. When I was teaching in a farm, I realized that most college students equated good writing with studying literature, whether it was Okamia literature or English literature. And let me tell you, this is not typical of Okam alone. This is also true of the students that I teach in the US. They come to college or the university thinking they are good writers because they got good marks in English. But when they enter my classroom, they realize that there is more to writing than being fluent or really good in a particular language. In fact, what if I told you that writing has very little to do with language and even lesser to do with literature? I myself had not really thought about writing this way till I joined the University of Pennsylvania to teach, guess what, yes, um, to teach writing. I had published six books by the time I reached there and I was working on my seventh. So I was very confident that I could teach writing to a bunch of Ivy League students. But imagine my surprise when I looked at the curriculum and took this very intensive training course at the Writing Center at Penn. I was also looking at writing in the way that all people who do not, who, or who have not taken a course in writing thought, that writing was intuitive, that it only required command over a particular language, and that it was something spontaneous. It just came to you like a natural talent, right? So uh, to some extent, yes, of course, writing is intuitive and it does require you to have command over a language, but there is so much more to it. And it was a humbling experience for me to recognize that I was not a naturally gifted writer, as you know, my readers, um, readers who had read my writing, my books, used to tell me, which used to make me feel so good about myself, like I was the chosen one or something. But you know what I realized after I got this big blow to my writer's ego? I learned that being able to write in a way that touches your reader and makes them feel connected to your words and your thoughts and your ideas is a little bit of an art, yes, but it was a whole lot more of the craft. As a reader, when we connect with a writer, when we fall in love with their words, their narratives and stories, it is mostly because the writer is an effective communicator and knows exactly what will appeal to their reader and exactly how they should use the language in order to have 
that effect on the reader. The same goes for academic writing. If you are writing a class report for your professor or a paper for a research journal, which will be published by, um, which will be read by specialists in the field, you always have an argument, right? You want to convey to your reader, whether it is your professor or your um, or, or the other specialists in your field, that you are stating something in your report or your paper, which is believable and logical and should therefore be accepted. This is your end goal. And accordingly, you will communicate your argument and you will use language and logic towards that end, and so on. In other words, you will be purposeful. What you write and how you write will be dictated by this purpose. This purpose is more significant in your writing process than how good you are with your language. So in the classroom now, when I teach my students how to write, I tell them that language and how we use it are only tools of effective writing. There is so much more to writing than being able to use literary or flowery language. In fact, um, depending on the audience that you are writing for, you might not want to use flowery language at all. I mean, you might say somebody's heart was beating like a drum if you were writing a novel or a short story, but if you are a medical professional and writing a case study of a patient, you will measure their heartbeat and mention that instead of just saying the patient's heart was beating like a drum, right? So. You see, um, there are all these rules of writing which we all need to follow and which really we, we do all follow these rules without knowing them, without being taught those rules. Some people are just better at using those rules in their writing than others and that is what makes them stand out. Writing instruction, whether it is critical writing or creative writing, is nothing but an unpacking of these rules of writing. It guides you in being an effective writer, no matter what field or discipline you are in, and regardless of what genre or audience you want to be writing for. Now, our students in our form are not taught these rules of writing. Writing as a discipline is established in higher educational institutions in the US, and elsewhere in the world, but there are very few institutions in India which offer writing instruction. So last year, I received a few panic calls from friends in Akong when creative writing was introduced in the English syllabus. Now, without teachers who are trained in teaching writing, the students will not benefit from the inclusion of creative writing in their curriculum and the teachers are not trained because they are also products of the same educational system that does not prioritize writing instruction. And that needs to change in our home if we are to produce competent writers who can publish in international journals confidently. Our ideas and experiences are not less or more valid and genuine than those of the people around the world. But if we cannot express them in a way that people around the world can read and appreciate, we will remain confined within our boundaries and that is not good for our self-confidence. So to be able to speak confidently to an international audience, I strongly believe that we must introduce writing instruction at all levels of education in Assam and not just in higher education.